Welcome to Loop and Learn. This is Kenny Fox. This video is one of a series where I review a looper's data in Night Scout and explain what changes I would make if it were my child and why. The Loop app is a do-it-yourself closed loop algorithm to help automate insulin delivery. It is experimental and not approved by the FDA. This presentation is provided to assist you in making your own decisions in consultation with your healthcare professionals regarding your own diabetes self-management. You take full responsibility for building and running this system and do so at your own risk. Remember that your diabetes may vary and that I am not a medical professional and just sharing my approach to managing diabetes with Loop. Brandy, this is your son. Forget now. Thank you. Cool. And um, how old? He's 12. 12. Okay. Brandy's 12 year old. I'm not a doctor, so this is not considered medical advice, uh, but this is advice as me, uh, someone who manages another type one. And for the most part, I've, I've helped quite a few people more intensely. And so they seem to be doing pretty well. Here we go. I'll just try to explain what it is I'm seeing. I may ask a couple of questions of the person who's uh, managing this particular Night Scout site and this person just so you guys can help get clarification, and so I can too. I can make pretty good guesses, but I'm gonna to try to let them add some color. So um, here we go. Okay, so what I'm trying to show here is their Night Scout site, um, as well as the basal rates. And I can move the settings here. These are the Night Scout settings, if you guys need to see the ISF and the carb ratios. But we're gonna start with, as always, Basil. First, we'll do a quick cursory glance, make sure all the basic stuff is available on the screen. So we have the loop pill, we have the Cage is nice, Sage is nice, IOB, all that's just visible. Double check the settings real fast. We have basal rendering. We all see the blue like section here at the top going up and down. I have all the alarms turned off, so hopefully they won't go off on us while we're looking at stuff. And then most of these are all fine. So insulin on board, carbs on board, air portal, Sage, sensor age, cannula age, all that's fine. Basal profile. Big thing is that you have loop enabled, override enabled, and that you um, have the loop prediction, which we see this purple line here. Just as a recap, because Joanne asked me to remind people, those are some of the basic settings you want when you're looking at your Night Scout site. Uh, we can make a more in-depth video where I just kind of cover that real quick. But a lot of it is in your defaults. So if you use a Night Scout Pro or Heroku or something like that, then you want to make sure your variables are set up so that when you launch this page, everything's where you want it to be. You don't have to keep messing with if they're on or off all the time. Okay, so first steps first is we're going to look at basal. Basal is always important. Basal will be checking based on the insulin on board here. So what we're looking for is insulin on board means uh, insulin above and beyond whatever you've told loop as your basal rate. So basal is kind of considered free insulin to a degree. So insulin on board is anything above and beyond that. So if we see positive insulin, on, then we IOB, then we should see drop in blood sugar unless there's food involved. We know that. Um, and if there's a negative insulin on board, we should see somewhere near that negative uh, a rise in blood sugar. If that kind of stuff's not happening, then basil's not right, and we got to figure out by about how much. Um, okay, so easiest thing to do is I always go look at the night, um, you know, where you can avoid some of the food and whatnot, unless you're low treating. Here is last night. Now, Brandy, you guys are three hours ahead. Is that right? So what you see on my uh, screen, guys, will, will be like 9 p.m. is actually midnight their time. So um, that's kind of the way Night Scout shows it. Unless we go look at the reports, and the reports will show us um, like their actual time, everything lined up. When we get down here to the drop, we don't get any negative insulin on board, which is be nice to see if that meant the basal was too strong or not. Didn't get that, but let's go back down to this one here. And... Okay, so now we get a nice flat line, and we're at kind of zero insulin on board, right around zero the whole time. You guys see that? Now we're going to check real fast on their settings. What's the... Oh, you guys have still a lot of ranges. That's right. That's kind of in the ballpark of the range. Um, 1130 is starting to get in here, trying to shoot for 120, 140. Okay. So level and in range, that's good. That tells us that likely the basal rates around this time are fairly accurate. But again, you have about six hour window because insulin lasts six hours in, in terms of how loop calculates it um, to, to have the wrong basal rate be messing with you. So this one starts at, we'll say we're here like three and we let's say basal's pretty solid until my time here looks to be about four. So if we go back to where this increases, this is at 10. So that's right about six hours. So I think we're, partially clear of this increased basal rate. So that should be okay. Um, 
That's good. So on the basal rates here on the left, or right underneath my face, you guys can see them. <laughs> They're on my left. We're looking at a midnight of 0 0.3, a 1, and a 330 of 0.3. So those are the, the rates you're kind of seeing at the top here. And then it shifts to a 0.6. This is a big jump up you guys see here at the top, uh, represented by this increase in the blue bar. Um, so my rule of thumb is that, and this is where, where I tend to have people start, and then we can adjust based on what's actually needed. But we try to go as simple as we can, right? So we go as few basal rates as possible. And they're often, the night and the day are usually really close together. They're either the same or they're very close. Um, there are rare instances where that's not the case. Things like stress at school, things like that, um, that I have seen. Uh, again, much more rare. So we start with basic. So if what's working overnight is working, then generally speaking, we would say that you would run that rate or something lower during the day. I find that, at least especially for kids, but I think for most everybody, you have growth hormones and other stuff going on when your body's repairing and growing. That seems to be why we need a little bit more insulin, if at all, um, it's overnight. So the basal rate that works for nighttime or basal rates that work for nighttime, daytime should be the same or lower to start with. So I would immediately go to, okay, let's probably going to need to change the seven, eight, like the daytime, the awake rates from the 0 0.6, 0 0.5s and 0.4s down to around a 0.3 or 0.35. But before we say yes to that, let's look and see how the day is going. Most often, like you might have a little bit of a, you know, feet on the floor, kind of morning rise stuff that's often being managed here. And so Brandy, are you experiencing that? Is that why there's a 0.6 jump at seven or is this mostly because of breakfast? It's mostly because of breakfast and because okay. I'm trying to work through the settings and my nights are very different from my day. So okay, no, no problem. My days are great. So I didn't touch those. So for this morning, it actually looked fine. Like usually what would happen if basal rates are pretty high, you're going to see kind of crashes one, two, three hours after a meal. Like you're, you're catching lows a lot. So then you treat and you shoot back up and that starts that up and down process. Um, usually it's pretty obvious. It's hard to get away from a basal rate that might be, for example, double or a little bit less than double of what's working overnight. You usually see pretty significant crashes. So this morning that didn't happen. So that's a little unusual. I would expect that, but I think it did catch up with her a little bit here. I have a question. If you remember, is this, did any, did, was this treated or was this fine on its own? Can you tell me what time? This would be 145. That was not treated. Okay, um, great. But he came from like recess and then sat down. All right. So not, down. not too bad. Right. Um, I would usually see a lot more crashing than this. And then, this might be what's happening right now, unless the sensor is going bad, because this can be kind of dramatic as well. This can also be insulin sensitivity. There's other reasons this, the, all this dosing happened when she went up and came back down. And I can ask about that in a little bit. This morning looks fine. Now, sometimes you can balance a high basal with food, right? So let's take a look at carb ratios and see if you're doing something to compensate for that. So these ratios, hopefully you guys can see the carb ratios now. 19, 21, 20. So I would say on average, these are pretty weak carb ratios for a 12 year old. If I'm going off the assumption that the basal rate is going to be right around the 0.3 to 0.4 range based on your overnights, that's pretty low for a 12 year old as well. You're not dealing with a lot of puberty insanity just yet in terms of hormones affecting blood sugar. So and growing and all that kind of stuff. And since you're on the lighter side, possibly for basal needs, based on what I'm seeing, makes sense that the carb ratios would be a little bit light, but I would think that those are going to probably come down if you end up reducing basal during the day. So if you think I'm not crazy, then um, well, you'll end up trading your basal and your carb ratios, right? So basal will come down and then carb ratios will also come down so that you're getting more insulin for on the bolus and not just in the background as basal. But let's take a look and see if that makes sense in a second. ISF, is it unreasonably low? Let's take a look. And I would say based on all these corrections here, I'll just show you. Um, you have negative insulin on board, which is good. You'd expect a rise. But do you know if um, your son ate here? This would no, be. No, so I took him out of school. Four. And he went and got a haircut. Sat and got a haircut. And just he had one Tootsie Roll, which I dosed the three carbs as he was eating it. Okay. And he rose out of control from one Tootsie Roll. And that was the pump. And the pump did all of that. Yep. My setting. Okay, and so then, three grams is here, yep. quick, lots of dosing. Let's take a look then, just then briefly. Later, if we hover, we okay, if we hover loop, you can see loop shows zero carbs on board. So the a lot of this dosing up at the top here is not based on the carb ratio, it's based on um, the ISF. So 
maybe a little bit intense. This looks like a lot if it's really just a tissue roll. I mean, tissue roll hit harder than you expected. So, but it's going to send him low, which isn't great. There's a good chance that the ISF might be a little strong at a hundred ISF for someone with a basal of around 0.3. Again, if that's what ends up working and you're not one of the outliers, then that's going to be really low. So it may need to come up. Um, you know, I, if I just had to guess off the top of my head, probably like in the 140, 150 range, maybe 160, depending on how sensitive this particular 12 year old is very quickly, those settings should shift, right? Like he's 12, you should start seeing <laughs> doubling or tripling of his basal rates and carb ratios and all this stuff should probably happen pretty soon. Not causing too much of a problem, but uh, I would say ISS is probably a little bit low, but let's see if I'm a little nuts. You last time I checked when I was looking at this last night, you guys hadn't changed settings a whole lot in the last few days, right? It's all been the kind of been the same since like, I think, uh, Sunday or Monday, something like that. I, I had some weird things happen last night, so I did change. Uh, you did like change some stuff. All right. So let's take a look and more. see what was changed since we're having to do a little bit of an investigation here. So we'll take to the week that comes up i'll make it a little bit bigger make sure insulin on board and carbs on board boxes are checked and you're running a 70 to 140 high which is fine just so you guys know the green bar is 70 to 140. so let's look at the day before so this these days here um thursday and wednesday look a little more especially wednesday it looks much more like i would expect a high basal to be contributing to lows right and a and a weak a weak carb ratio paired with a heavy um, basal, where you shoot up because you don't quite have enough food in the bolus, and then you crash back down and you're catching it. So Thursday and Wednesday, these two days, um, and even Tuesday, look a lot more like what I was expecting to see. If the overnight basal of around 0.3 to 0.4 is is what's going to be close to the necessary basal. Um, so let's see what you changed. So if you guys aren't sure what you changed recently, if you know we all change settings and forget what we changed, you can pop over to the profiles tab and you can see here, uh, you can change every time you run an override or make a settings change, it pushes a new profile to Night Scout. So there can be a lot here if you're running overrides or making little changes, um, but we can take a look and we have basal rates match what we see on the side here on the other window below my face. So if I pop back, here to let's say yesterday you did change a little bit but the basal rates look mostly the same like that's the big thing it was but just the ISF. It threw, I, I ISF the change ISF. a little bit yeah so if we go back to like earlier in the week so this is on the 17th which is like five days ago this is a little more what i would consider pretty typical basal so i'm curious um what prompted you to make a change from 0.35s most of the day to 0.6s was it just handling the meal the br so, breakfast? Um, I think that's my weekend basal rate, which is also days that he's home from school. So I have a different profile because uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, he has two and a half hour PE days. Okay. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, he has a different schedule. So I literally change his profile every other day. Every weekend. other day. Okay. He's I see home. a little bit of change. So that's my, those, are my, those are my home basal rates. Okay. Yeah. 17th and 18th are your home basal rates. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. Yep. All that's right. a weekend. I'll go back even further. Which okay. proves your point. Yeah, so I think I think you were hovering right around, I think, pretty good basal rates before in that 0.35 to 0.4 range. And so I just want to make sure we figure out kind of where the the big change is. That's the 20th, 21st is where we get, you get kind of a change on the 21st. So if we pop back over to the day-to-day, -day, you can see like the 19th and the 18th. Well, the 18th is still kind of spiky, but I think, again, carb ratios are probably a little bit weak, I think, in general. But... You got some negative insulin on board on Sunday, even not so a little bit on Monday when you get to the morning and you got some crashing like so. Yeah, basal rates are probably a little high and then you have a higher target here on Saturday. And building up some negative, but not quite going up. So when you have a low here with higher basal rates here on the left. Yeah, so I think it looks like you you're kind of flipping back and forth, like using basal to address the highs, the challenges with meals. Um, is that kind of feel like what you're usually thinking to do? No, I don't think I that's not what I'm thinking, but it might be what I'm doing. A lot of the crashes are like right now, I told him that people were going to be looking at his night scout to learn how we can use loop better. And he said, Oh gosh, I got to go fix my blood sugar. So he's outside <laughs> shooting hips right now crashing, but it's, he did have a meal right before he went outside. Right. So oh yeah. See, and, that, and that's, that's a normal like crash, right? You go eat and then dose up for it and then you run outside and 
Fine. And then on the weekends, the reason why I keep putting high targets are because he plays basketball daily so that that helps manage his blood sugar insulin needs all the time. And so, so you see these constant, like, high, you know, I change the target, high target, low target, you know, my, what do you call those profiles or, and that's why he crashes. And then he gets adrenaline high from basketball. But then if he just goes outside and shoot hoops, he crashes, you know, so. Okay. Um, so let me affirm your decision to use higher target overrides for activity. Gold star. Good job. Um, not not res- not trying to go redu- reductions or increases in insulin, right? Percentage increases or decreases. It just complicates trying to figure out what things should be, but shooting higher is good. Um, one thing I'll also point out you can use is temporary basal rates are now in loop and have been in loop for a little while. So you can always, if you think you just need it off and don't mind that there wouldn't be any automation to change if, if things change on you, you can just set a zero or lower temp basal rate, you know, for half hour, hour, if you feel like that's just, I just want it off and I don't really want to mess with targets and overrides. Like, feel free to do that. But higher target overrides is great. I would say you're, if, if we were hanging out, which is kind of what we're doing, everyone else is just listening. Um, I would say, uh, well, you had a really good day today uh, based on your changes in the past. I would try and find what is close to his, normal basal rate and what that means is like try to pick one to two rates overnight that are pretty close together like your 0.35s and your 0.3s are fine and let's watch that and see how the night goes and try to get try to see if you can get down to your range and low insulin on board you can see this blue line at the bottom and if you need help trying to let's say he's running a little bit higher you can always what i tell people is kind of like stress test with isf a little bit you can lower the ISF and I think they're pretty low now and maybe even too low where loop can like, if you're a little light on the basal, it needs to bolus to kind of knock you down to your range. And you'll see like little waves in your, in your blood sugar. And then we can watch the IOB and how it corresponds to those waves, but you don't want waves so big that it's actually sending him low. (laughs) And then you're having to treat and go back up. If you feel like things are running on the lower side, you set a higher target like you did here and you can, that way there's room for the numbers to move without, you know, c- causing you to wake up and have to deal with it. Um, but we want to try to get a pretty smooth number. And I would I would venture to say that if you're real adventurous, depends on uh, what's today's Friday, right? So yeah, you have the weekend. You don't have to worry about school. So this is a better time for this. Um, you could do a pretty radical change, um, which I would not advise most people doing this unless you've done it a lot, where you could change kind of everything at once. I would think that I would say as, as much as you're comfortable in terms of how much to dose for meals, and you could rapidly change this um, if like breakfast goes crazy, for example, is I would start creeping your carb ratios down toward the like 15, maybe even 12 mark. You don't necessarily jump there right now, but move that direction as you start to back off the basal to kind of what you were using earlier in the week and your normal like weekend profile. So if your weekend profile is kind of what you're going to flip to, that's good. I think that's closer to like a 0.3, 0.35 all day. So try to match day and night or pick a slight difference, like a little more during the night and a little less during the day. So either I would say use those two as your pick one, either same rate, 24 hours, or a slight less during the day. You have to determine what's most appropriate for how you think the day goes. And then I would start to creep the carb ratios down. Now, you also need to, at the same time, though, you need to, um, I think, lower this ISF quite a bit. Because if you're hanging in the 0.3s, or sorry, increase sensitivity, softer number um if you're gonna have if you're in the basils they're kind of the 0.3s 0.4s probably need to have closer like i said a maybe as low as a 120 for a 12 year old but you know try like 150 um that's a really big change so if you do 150 and bring the carb ratios down that will probably help a little bit but your basils definitely have to come down too so don't make all these changes unless you do all of them right (laughs) um so if you want to ride on the safe side you would adjust basal, pick a rate or two, like we just said, and then bump the ISFs up and then and then re- reactively bring the carb ratios down, right? Based on how meals go. But if you're like, hey, if we're going to back off basal by a lot, I don't really want to be dealing with highs, then, you know, bring the carb ratio down a decent amount. Like a decent amount was, um, if you're at 20, coming down to 15 is a pretty decent jump. So, you know, 17... 15, I kind of say between the 15 and 20 coming down in twos is pretty normal. And then you can kind of like jump back up to a plus one, minus one. When you start getting under 15, moving in ones is usually a good idea. And then you can use halves, 0.5s to kind of go in between. 
And then once you get under 10, you're moving in kind of the halves or less. And once you get under about seven or eight, you're really moving in like 0.2s and 0.3s at a time. So I think for right now, you can move, you know, two at a time, three at a time, whatever you want. So um, you have them home. So be as aggressive as you're comfortable um, since you have them there. But if you're going to be, if you're sending them off somewhere, then, you know, uh, maybe make these changes a little slower, if that makes sense. Um, profile yeah. And the last thing I'll leave you with, because what can happen when you reduce um, heavier basils during the day, which you don't have. Oh, you do it. The 430 is kind of dramatic right now. What can happen is we've all dealt with this is a rise when they go to sleep. That's never fun. So make sure that you are you watch that there's a meal playlist on our YouTube channel for loop and learn. There's a section we kind of cover like fat and protein, how to tackle meals. There's like a three part series. So if you're not incorporating fat and protein into your meal entries, um, that will provide the most consistency from meal to meal. You know, start with 20 or 30 percent of the grams of fat and protein. If you add those up in the meal, add those in as carbs and you have to make sure you're using the longer absorption times. Um, and don't use the fast absorption time pretty much at all. <laughs> Just stay away from that while you're trying to figure out your settings. So if you add a little bit of fat and protein, you don't have to do it like tomorrow if you're not doing it today. But um, if you do like a five hour, a longer absorption time for dinner, and maybe if you start seeing a rise, um, retroactively go back and add some, a long entry for the fat and protein based on like about a third um, as a place to start to try to help you tackle that rise. Because it's not really basil all the time. It's it's just like you went to bed with food in your system and you know, it's the combination of the two is never great. So that can give you at least a place to start. And if you need to manually bolus, manually bolus. Like it's not going to break the algorithm. It's not going to break the basal calculation. You don't have to like sit back and watch it do its thing. Like if you feel like you need to act, then act. That's what I tell people. Like it's not going to affect the basal calculation. So don't just come back and say, well, I did what you said. And now, you know, he's running 300 for a few hours at night. Well, I probably missed out on dinner meal, dinner bolusing, things like that. So, um, Bad pod site, whatever. Does that help, Brandy? Do you have questions? That's a lot of it stuff. Does, but but... I have one very big question. And um, if I were to make a drastic change in the ISF on the weekend, which I would, I'm about to flip to my weekend profile, which mm -hmm. is mostly 0.3.35. So let's just say I do that right now. So I would do it if not for this call anyway. But if I were to keep those profile, basal profiles and switch to a higher ISF, presumably, as long as my son's not playing basketball or being active, he would all of a sudden run really high if normally that gives me an okay, right? It's a good question. Actually, the risk is actually he'll run low. Um, and the reason yeah. is, uh, I'll show you, you see the red active carb line here, like from breakfast, let's say, the 50 grams, it kind of tapers down to the 11. So a three-hour absorption time gives a window of loop to say carbs can be active for that meal of about four and a half hours. So that means from eight to nine, 10, 11, 12 30 so basically until lunch loop loop will leave the window open to look for these carbs to show up in their blood sugar until 12 30 right now it's dying off well before that you see that active carbs goes to zero carbs on board the red line when you increase the isf and you don't change anything else what will happen is loop will see these carbs last longer for I mean, there's all kinds of ways to say it, but the carbs on board will, will it'll take longer to see the carbs. So the carbs will stay on board or active longer. Um, and so this red line would start to, if, if loop were to recalculate it in night scout, which it won't when you change the settings, but on the ice screen, if you pull up the list of carbs, you may see that this entry absorbed in, it looks like two and a half hours. You'll see breakfast, 50 grams absorbed two and a half hours, right? If you change the ISF from 100 to 150 during this time frame. It will it will go much longer. And I'll say instead of two and a half hours, I might say three and a half or four hours, right? And that's retroactive. So what that means is that this red line will start to overlap with the lunch or the snack entry, right? That thirty five here, and so more of those carbs that were seen as part of snack will now also be pushed out because now the meals are overlapping, the carbs are overlapping each other. So then then the next one will push out, and the next one will push out, and the next one will push out, and so it potentially has the chance of increasing the overlap and how carbs have been seen to where now all of a sudden you're dealing with right now he has zero oh, well, he doesn't have zero but he has very low active carbs at the moment we can look and see uh loop shows 27 carbs on board you might see that if you increase the isf to 150 his carbs on board might jump up to let's say 40 
So now Luke wants to dose for another 13 carbs. So does that make sense why he might go low, right? Because now the meals are longer. It does. Can I just recap just so understanding? So that means if I increase my ISF to 150 for weekend, which will hopefully become all the time, then on I should probably lower my basal, like you said, maybe my daytime basal should be even less than right. nighttime. So maybe lower my basal to like 0.25 and see how that goes. Well, um, I'd say compared to today, today is higher. So I think your normal basal profiles for the weekend looked closer to what it what I think you probably should try out, which is like 0.35 okay. or 0.3, something like that. I would say for today, if you're going to change the ISF and you feel like Loop's going to dose too much at the moment, you could either add some insulin on board for the change in basal, which I can explain in a second, or you can just reduce some of the um, carb amounts and some of the entries to where you're comfortable, right? Because otherwise you just got to wait until he's in bed and then make the changes, right? So there's the meals are further away and there's less of a chance of it like building up to having a big bolus right now. The easy mode is, yeah, change it before you go to bed. <laughs> um, if you want to change it now, then I would... Flip the profile, right? Switch to like a more stable basal rate to try that out. Because you've been running about a 0.45, and let's let's assume you're going to run like a 0.35. I don't know if you want to run a 0.3. 0.3 worked really well last night, but if you run like a 0.35, you could add, you could go into loop and add an injection of 0.6 uh, units, and that will increase the insulin on board. And that's about the amount of insulin that's actually like in his body right now that loop says is free, is basal. But you're like, oh, basal was too high. So you need to transition that insulin that's basal and move it to active so loop doesn't overdose. And so I can go over the math later, but if you add like a, an injection of 0.6 right now and then switch the basals, then you're less likely to have loop overdose and cause some problems. Again, you could just be patient and flip it now and then you know kind of deal with life. And then by the time he goes to bed, make the ISF changes and you'll probably be stable, should be fine. But if you want like a quick fix, then yeah, I would inject, fake inject 0.6. And then um, then you can start tweaking the ISF and make sure it's not going to overdose them. And if it does, dial back some of the carbs and then uh, to where you're comfortable. And then you can have tomorrow's a fresh day and you can kind of see how it goes. Is that, has that helped? Yeah, that's so the, really The boring. ISF increase, by the way, I'm only talking about the daytime. If you want to keep the nights as low as they are for corrections, like in case basil's too light or whatever, that's fine. That's up to you. But I meant okay. more like the awake time. I would also sure. simplify your life. This is a big recommendation. Um, you have a lot of settings here. So um, <laughs> I I tend to go with like two or three, two or three hour chunks overnight and then daytime, right? Awake time, eating time, food in your face time is the big, is the one ISF, just one, just make it one. Um, that way you're just adjusting. Cause again, how I explained it, ISF affects food. So <laughs> just make one ISF for the day and then a couple at night. And that'll dramatically like simplify your settings and you're not chasing stuff quite so much. And same with the basal rates is the way I tackle basal rates. And you can leave it like this for now if you want and just change the numbers. But I tend to do, um, I can even, do, I'll just show you Tessa's, it doesn't matter. Um, so this is Tessa's basal rates down here. So it's really just like a couple slots, like five slots, right? Nighttime, I got 9 p.m. to midnight. Sometimes I add a, like 11 p.m. in there. At midnight to 3, 3 to 6, and then she's basically awake. Same with the correction ranges. You have a lot of correction ranges. I didn't show that for people, but it, you have a lot of correction ranges. And what I explained in the comment recently on the post is that it's not doing probably what you think it is. So you might want to watch. The, there's a, a video on the YouTube um, channel called like how the loop algorithm works. And we just talk about how the correction range like gives loop permission to dose and and how it how it acts on the predictions based on the range you define and essentially you have like the time now which is like when you're inside the range and above if necessary loop can auto dose insulin right and then it's looking six hours out for where to aim from here to there so when you have a lots of when you have lots of ranges like this it's like the 11 30 120 to 140 it's actually aiming for 120 to 140 six hours before this so like 5 30 a.m it's trying to hit 120 but at 5 30 a.m it's allowed to dose between 90 and 100 that makes sense sure. so if they're going up yeah reset. so it's just it's not probably not doing what you're wanting if you're wanting a certain time of day at school where loops just like chill not attacking as low 
then I, you're better off just scheduling an override that has a higher target because overrides say just loop pay attention to this number this range now and into the future like just don't worry about my other ranges just this one right here so um so you can schedule an override like like so if i was working and i know that he has recess while i can't go in and set a profile uh an override yeah. you can schedule that yeah so if you if you set if you turn on the override like let's say you want a 120 to 140 override target, right. turn it on, and then the bar at the top of loop, you you'll see the override at the top of the bar, right? Tap on that bar, and then you can edit it and you can change the time and have it start at like 11 a.m. or whatever. So before he leaves, you could just schedule the override to turn on around 11 from like 11 to two or something like that, and then you could have it run and turn off on its own. Now, if you set another override remotely, it's gonna wipe it out, but at least it'll be set to turn on. Does that help? That's so super helpful. So if that's what you're after, I would reduce your ranges again to like a. I kind of try to do right around two ranges. You can see I had three, I believe. Um, you really don't need the third one, but I have like a a midnight to like oh one a.m. Oh, that's weird. I'm not sure why that's different. Okay, um, I'll look at that later. But basically, midnight to two p.m. is basically what I'm what I want. So. Midnight, which basically means at 6 p.m. the previous night, it's shooting for this overnight number, right? And then all through the night, that's the range it can like manage and shoot for. And then six hours before this 2 p.m., which is, yeah, 10 a.m. At 10 a.m., it's starting to shoot for 90 to 100, right? The loop can still attack in that early morning between breakfast and lunch, can still attack or give insulin in the lower numbers of the 85 to 90, which is probably why I have this here. But it's shooting for 90 to 100 instead of 85 to 93. So I pretty much just do two to three ranges. So kind of like where you want to be overnight until like 12, one or two in the morning. And then where you kind of want loop to act mostly during the day is the other one. You can do other ones in that, but I think once you get more than that, you're, you're complicating what you're after. Makes sense. It's very yeah. helpful. All right. If you don't have any more questions, I'm going to move on to Danielle's and I don't have to repeat a lot of the education I just gave. So thank you so much. Okay. Here are a couple screenshots from a few days before and a few days after Brandy made the changes we discussed and things are looking a whole lot better and here's some of her feedback. Her son is still very sporadically active during the day, but you can see it's much easier to manage now. I hope you found this video useful. Please subscribe and follow us all around social media at Loop and Learn.